okay so i saw this tweet and it said what three album run is this and i had a couple of ones i wanted to talk about okay so first up i have justin timberlake so the reason why i have four albums pictured here instead of three is basically because 2020 experience part one and two were released in the same year and part two was just leftovers of what didn't make it from part one he wanted it to be one album and the label told him to split it up to my understanding so it works if i just did future Sickless love sounds to part one to part two in my opinion but if you kind of consider them to be one album part one and part two then you would have men of the woods so you can consider it either way for me because either way works but that's kind of the explanation on why both of them are here so basically future sucks love sounds great electro r&b album with stuff like sexy back which you know he worked with timbaland on and basically this entire album and love stone i think she knows interlude was great what goes around comes around was great with those guitars as well summer love is like my favorite song on this album one of my favorite justin timberlake songs i just really liked his vocals i like the lyrics and all that stuff the only skips that i had on this album were going to be damn girl featuring will i am i just hate that song and then another their song all over again although that song was trash losing my way is the closer for me on the album but i think it's pretty strong especially for the time and i really like the production and vocals and writing on here 2020 experience part one had some great stuff such as strawberry bubblegum top 10 justin timberlake song for me i really like the back half of that tunnel vision is absolutely incredible on just the soundscape that he's using on there and i also really like suit and tie featuring jay-z i mean that's definitely classic and push your love girl amazing opener blue ocean floor i feel like is quite underrated it deserves a little bit more and of course i love stuff like tunnel vision the only song that'd be a skip is let the groove get in i just hate that song but you know this is a pretty strong album for part two huge disappointment for me it really is it just feels like a dumpster fire and so i like tko i think i like the song with jay-z murder and then i also like take back the night and maybe I like Not A Bad Thing. I just remember that song. So those are the songs I liked and maybe one other song. But overall, the songs in here are just very forgettable. I don't really like this album. So like I said, if you do it, those three, it works. But if you exclude that and we're just going on to Man of the Woods, I mean, I feel like it's pretty self-explanatory. You know, Breeze Off the Pond is one of my favorite Justin Timberlake songs. I think that that's a jam, especially that last part at the end. What it looked like trying to hide my life. One of those guys, you know, that part. I really like that part. And then I really like Midnight Summer Jam, Higher Higher, but that's kind of where the positives of this album end with me because we had stuff like Supplies and Man of the Woods and Filthy and that song with Alicia Keys that was trash and I don't like the Chris Stapleton collaboration even though a lot of people go up for it. And so yeah, a lot of the songwriting and production of this album I just think is horrible. Him trying to go country for the most part didn't really work. It's a stand in his discography and I feel like we can all agree on that. Next up we got Paul McCartney. So this is with his band Wings and they had a lot of good albums albums i think but you know we got to get into this so band on the run great album for the most part only song that i guess kind of annoying is mrs vanderbilt just because of how repetitive it is but i still think it's a really good album you got great stuff like 1985 and the vocals there the title track is amazing with a lot of different parts that it has bluebird is a nice acoustic moment on this album jet is a good song to listen to i like no words so there's a lot i like about this album one of the defining albums of the 70s in my opinion then we have Venus and Mars, so I love the title track, Manito and Titanium Man, You Gave Me the Answer, Listen to What the Man Said, like there's just something that's really cool about this album, so I really like this album, probably one of the better Wings albums. And then we had Wings at the Speed of Sound. Now, there are some good songs on this, like one of my favorite Wings songs, Let Em In, is on this album, I Love Silly Love Songs, but where he went wrong with this album was, it was like, oh, we're all gonna sing a song, and no shade, this band works because paul's a singer i don't mind a background vocal here every once in a while maybe give them a verse but for them to have whole songs and for the songwriting to be as bad as it is yeah this was just a disappointment it was i'm sorry i want to hear paul sing the songs and so i just never really went for this album i don't get why people like this album especially next to these two so it was a disappointment to me. next up i got brandy so we have never say never excellent album i love the title track almost doesn't count as one of my favorite brandy songs put that on everything the boy is mine with monica pretty strong album it does weaken out towards the end i will say that but it's really good for what it is and you also have a song like happy so definitely one of the r&b bibles of the 90s right and then we have full moon aka her best album in my opinion when you touch me is her best song just the vocals on there exquisite and then i love stuff like all in me it's not worth it he is even wow i feel like is underrated on this i really like the lead single for this one what about us full moon the song like this is a great album 
besides the song with ray j because he basically ruins everything he touches so you know not a shocker for me and then last up we had aphrodisiac and i just feel like this album is so overrated like there's people who try to tell me that it was better than these two albums or that it's one of her best albums and y'all lie y'all lie because there ain't no way you go to these two albums and then you listen to aphrodisiac and tell me that it wasn't a disappointment i'm sorry because she was working with Timbaland on this album and so on paper it was supposed to be good because you're working with him you're coming off full moon which is your best album and then this album is so forgettable and that's the part that kills me because it's like I just listened to it and all the songs besides like the same three or four just go in one ear and out the other I have listened to this album at least six or seven times I'm not doing it again I don't see what you guys see in this album at all the songs that I liked on this album I love aphrodisiac the song the song with Kanye actually was good but I skipped through Kanye's part and I like Sididi and and I think Who Is She To You? Those are like my songs that I go to. Nine times out of ten, I'm just listening to Aphrodisiac, the song. That's one of the only eats on this album. But I just, I don't get why people go for this album to this day. Next up, we got Britney Spears. So first up is Blackout, one of the best albums of the 2000s, I fear. Not up for debate. And so some of my favorite songs on here, Peace of Me was a great single. I was appreciating it more listening to the album again. And so I also really like stuff like Why Should I Be Sad? It is one of my favorite Britney Spears songs of all time. Shout out to the Neptunes for putting that together. Underrated stuff like Heaven on Earth and Toys soldier deserve a little bit more love i will say so there's just a lot to like with all the electro pop going on throughout this album so shout out to britney and the producers for putting this together because it was just so good for the time and it's still great to listen to so it has to be her best album only song i don't care for is get naked i got a plan if this is the plan put the clothes back on i i hate that song i do i don't get the hype and it just ruins the album for me but you know it's my i feel like it's a pretty strong album Next is Circus. As I said before, y'all don't give this album enough. It is one of her best albums and I'll die on that hill. I'm sorry because when I did a versus between this and another album on Twitter, everyone, oh, this is really hard. I could have been totally uh, asleep on the album. And Unusual You is one of my favorite Britney Spears songs ever. I just think that it's so different for her and I think it's super cool to listen to. I also love Blur as well. Another favorite for me. You have the title track Circus, Womanizer. I don't really go up for that song a whole lot though. I get why people like it. I think there's just better songs on this album. Shattered Glass is kind of underrated if you seek amy like this is a really good album it is and people don't talk about it enough i'm sorry the transition from blackout to circus it has to be studied it is because she ate and then femme fatale this album sounds like 2011 and in the worst way i hate it i'm sorry like it sounds so dated i liked a couple of songs off of here like i like the singles like criminal and i believe hold it against me is off this album until the world ends and maybe another song or two but i basically never re-listened to this album and i only go here for like a song or two every once in a while like this album it's just a huge drop off in quality and i think britney wasn't really that creatively involved in this album because of the conservatorship and everything so i do want to acknowledge that and they treated her horribly but you know just in comparison to the previous two albums this album it's just a disappointment janet jackson so all for you uh, what a great album you know all for you doesn't really matter some of the best pop songs ever written and recorded as i said someone to call my lover was a great single i love trust to try her getting into her rock bag china love is a moment on this album would you mind is something that only a janet jackson could pull off i didn't really care for you ain't right i think that's my only real skip on the album but you know there's a lot to like and i even like that collaboration that she had with carly simon as well uh iconic iconic it was such a good pop album for that year and her music videos and aesthetics and you know she's underrated for her vocals i like this album a lot i do and then demeanor joe a fan loved album for sure think about my ex best song on the album i don't care i don't care and i also really like stuff like all night don't stop i also really like r&b junkie spending time with you warmth moist stuff like that so most of this album i like there are a few skips on it but you know genuinely i really like this album swan my o is one of the worst albums made by a main pop role ever and i will die on that hill this album is so bad and i blame jermaine dupree for this because she was working with jimmy jam and terry lewis and they were going just fine and then he came and he ruined the album and there's only like three or four good songs on this album and joy is one of janet's best songs and you know it doesn't help that they're sampling elements of control because that's what this album was kind of doing is paying homage and you're like oh i remember when she made good music like this album is so bad especially with stuff like this body i know a lot of people go for so excited but i hate that song and i don't really get what the hype is for it but yeah 20yo is just not it and most janet fans agree on that and y'all hate on discipline but discipline is way better than 20yo i will stand on that down to some john mayer him and justin timberlake are terrible people so you know let's get that out of the way let's get that out of the way i like the music but they must be held accountable battle studies great album i like half of my heart off of this album quite a lot actually 
and I even really enjoyed stuff like War of My Life, Friends, Lovers, or Nothing. Edge of Desire is one of my favorite John Mayer songs. I didn't care for the cover of Crossroads, I think that's on this album, but everything else I really enjoyed, even stuff like Who Says. And yeah, to follow Continuum is a hard task, and I feel like he did it quite well on Battle Studies. I think that there's a maturity of it that I really do like, so I think that it's his best album behind Continuum, actually. And then we had Born and Raised. I like the title track on this album. Queen of California is another one of my favorite John Mayer songs on here. And so, yeah, there's a lot of nice stuff on this album, I think. I think there was like a skip or two, but I like this album generally. It has good songwriting on here. And then we got to Paradise Valley, and this album is his worst album. I hate this album. When I tell y'all, I basically never revisit this album. I think I've saved a song or two off of it. And if you deleted this album from his discography tomorrow, I promise you I would not notice. That's how bad that I think that this album was. It just felt so bland and artistically, I just feel like he didn't really have a whole lot to reach from. And yeah, it's a huge disappointment for me, a stain on Jeremiah's discography, if you will, because the rest of his albums are pretty good, but this one, absolutely not. Next up, I got Rihanna. Loud, great album. You know, cheers. We love that song. We do. The singles, I thought were really great off of this album. I mean, great pop album. Talk that talk, talk that talk the song alone, eight. And then we had Unapologetic. And this album, some people try to tell me that this is one of Rihanna's best albums. I don't know where you're hearing it. You know, Diamonds was on this album. I'll give her a tense for that. And Get It Over With is one of my favorite Rihanna songs. So she ate down and that was incredible. But this album overall is not good. And a lot of times I feel like Rihanna is carried by the single. And she has some good album tracks. I just feel like Rihanna has three or four good albums at best usually. And I just go and I listen and I find the tracks that I really like to listen to. But yeah, unapologetic. It's not it. I'm sorry. Not to some Taylor Swift. So I think that this is a good album. It hasn't had as much replay value for me recently as it has in the past. But I still do like this album. I still think that it's worth listening to if you like Taylor Swift and you want some really good songwriting and stuff. Willow was super catchy. I love Gold Rush and all the production that's going on there. Tolerance is my favorite Taylor Swift track five and I think it's her best in terms of the songwriting. Cowboy Like Me is one of my favorite Taylor Swift songs of all time. I think it's just a gorgeous piece. There are some skips on here for example like the bonus tracks that were on this album were not good. Easily her worst bonus tracks that she's released to date and I didn't really particularly go up for Evermore the song because Bonnie Vera just completely ruins it and maybe another song or two but for the most part it's a pretty good album. It is. I still think Vocalore is better but this is a good album. Nothing to scoff at. And then we had Midnight's. A lot of people don't go for Midnight's. I feel like I'm one of the only people who actually like this album upon release. But, you know, I still just stand on it. You know, Lavender Haze is a great opener. Maroon, one of her best track twos and probably one of my favorite Taylor Swift songs of all time. And then You're On Your Own Kid was a really great piece. I always really liked Bejeweled off of this album as well. I love Karma. That is one of the best songs in this album. A great pop masterpiece. And the remix was atrocious. If we're talking about the extra songs that she threw on there, I really did love Hits Different you're losing me was a great track so i liked most of it vigilante shit is a reputation reject in my opinion so i never really went up for that song i don't go up for dear reader midnight rain has never particularly been a favorite so there were a few skips but generally i thought this was a pretty good album pretty good pop album and i like the songwriting tortured poets department it's not as atrocious as a lot of these albums that I'm putting in, you know, this third slot that I'm like, oh, this album was, you know, horrible. I'm giving this album my best of five or six out of 10. On my YouTube channel, Anastasia25, I kind of explained why. And in a few weeks, I'm going to do my updated opinions video. I'm going to go track by track and kind of explain a little bit more. But it just kind of feels uninspired from everything else that she has done before it. I just feel like there's a whole lot of songs that aren't really catchy to me, that aren't really outstanding to me, for example. I feel like there's like maybe three or four excellent songs on this album. I'm not pulling as much from this album as I have from A Midnight's, for example, and I think that it is a disappointment now that I've taken a little bit more time to kind of sit with it and such but I really like stuff such as Peter for example and maybe like two other songs but this album meh. it's just the album that people think Taylor Swift has been making this whole time and this is not really what her music is there are some personal moments on the album like Song London but I mean this album as a whole is a disappointment now that I've released it so yeah that's basically my kind of moment of what three album run was this and I really considered putting Mariah Carey first two albums and then Music Box and I have my qualms with Music Box as discussed but I mean I think Music Box is a good album I don't think it's representative of her artistically but I don't think it's about album. I don't think it's listable so you know I switched up a little bit on that and so we have it there but let me know what you guys think down below in the comments do you agree with me on these picks do you disagree with me which three album run at the end kind of was a disappointment for you and let's continue that conversation